So Adam, we're appreciably a couple of decades forward now. We have quite a different looking set of guns or rifles on the table in front of us. Can you talk us through what we have here? Absolutely, Simon. So what, we've, what we see in front of us now is, uh, is the Cold War. Um, Britain adopts a semi-automatic rifle mm. um, as their main, as their, um, as their weapon, infantry weapon. Um, what we've got in front of us is um, uh, what pe might, people might think is an FN foul. Um, it's actually um, a licensed version of the FN foul, which was called the self-loading rifle. Mm. Um, designation was the L1A1. Um, what we've got in front of us today is um, a very early type from the uh, mid 50s, um, still an L1A1, and then a slightly later version here. So this um, this weapon would serve uh, the UK military for the best part of 40 years. Right. Uh, uh, actually uh, wow. you know, nearing 50 years mm -hmm. um, came in in the 1950s and phased out the um, the uh, Lee Enfield number no. four mm. um, was adopted um, and was seen in every action every operation the UK saw themselves right up until um, it was phased out in the late 80s and early 90s I mean these were still being held by some units in the first Gulf in, in 91. Wow that's so. astonishing so it was a very very successful design. Absolutely and this this design the FN foul design is still used today by militaries around the world um, it's a it's a reliable um, workhorse um, sometimes known referred to as the right hand of the free world because <laughs> during during sort of the, the communist period um, short of the US and we'll talk about the why the US never adopted this um, a lot of countries in the world use this as their um, as their main weapon and uh, well, Western countries did anyway sure. so whilst the um, the Soviet bloc were tending to lean towards their AK variants. The, the West had a, a version of either this um, or the German G3. Okay, so we've got, obviously got two variants here on the table. What, what's the difference here? Okay, so this is an early version of the L1A1 mm -hmm. or SLR self-loading rifle. Um, as you can see, um, uh, proportions are very much the same. What we've got is a refinement of process, a lightening of process, and a change of material. So um, you've got, um, in, in the older version here, the 1954 model, um, you've got wooden stock and wooden furniture. Okay, So um, it's still um, a bit of a throwback from our, our Lee Enfield days. Um, slight changes to the carry handle. Um, that you'll notice as well there's slight changes to um, the sights as well. These, these ones are slightly different. but serve exactly the same purpose but mm -hmm. what you've got from here and this is a 1980s version is a uh, is very much just a, a refinement so using of polymer and plastics uh, to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for the furniture mm -hmm. um, and that's really all it was there's um, the magazines didn't change an awful lot we've got here um, so this is the same magazine this this is a 20 round box magazine Fine. so it would f it would hold 20 rounds of what was the new um, uh, NATO 762 by 51 cartridge. Mm -hmm. So this is a rimless cartridge. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice on the um, 303, it was an older cartridge mm -hmm. um, designed in the 19th century. So it had a sort of a rim here. So what we've got here is uh, the new NATO cartridge at the time, a 762, rimless, uh, and essentially had very similar properties to the 303, but just a 303 weapon couldn't chamber it. So um, the UK adopted this along with most NATO countries. Um, the Americans adopted it in the M14 battle rifle, um, uh, but most of the countries use a version of this with the G3 or, or the FN foul or SLR in this Sure, case. sure. So uh, which kind of conflicts then would have, say, this one would have seen, and then what conflict might this gun So seen? we're talking this this design, they're, like I said, they're very, very similar. Um, the Malaya Emergency, um, this is the sort of weapon you'll be seeing. Um, 
Yeah, so any of the sort of police interventions, uh, policing interventions of the 1960s. Right. Um, but really towards the sort of 70s, you're getting this kind of design, the, mm -hmm. the wood stocks getting dropped, and we're getting this polymer design. Mm -hmm. And uh, and indeed, the, the troubles in Northern Ireland, you know, mm -hmm. you'll see that pose of a, a, a sort of a, a British soldier on a corner and mm -hmm. on that in, uh, in in the troubles uh, on, this, on this side. Um, mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. iconic, mm -hmm. very iconic weapon. Very long, we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up in a second. But um, no, I mean, I suppose most notably, this was the rifle we took to took to war in uh, uh, in 1982 um, when the Falkland Islands were invaded, um, the task group that went down were all armed with the um, the SLR. Wow. wow! Actually, interestingly, up against an Argentine force who had their licensed version of an FN. Oh. So they 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 had a, they actually had a um, a version that could fire automatic. So uh, the selector switch on this, um, and we'll just show. You. Just turn it over and show you. So you've got a safe and repetition. So there's no, so safe is, this, that's where the safety is. Um, R is repetition, so it's it's um, semi-automatic. Right. The Argentine version was, uh, was had a fully automatic function. So um, for some reason, and I can see why, uh, 7.62 fully automatic from a rifle like this must have been pretty hard to handle. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. What marks this out as well, of course, is this intriguing little handle. On the yeah, thing. It's, what, a, what, it's an interesting, cause I, literally all it is is a, is a, is a, is a handle. This, this one's really stiff because it's quite old. <laughs> um, and then all it was was a carrying system. So, you know, you, you keep that up if you're carrying it um, uh, such as you're carrying sure, a bag sure. almost. Um, because it's quite a hard, heavy weapon just to hold like this. Yeah, so sometimes right. that might be idea. But folding it down, then you had a clear sight picture mm -hmm. between the sights. Mm -hmm. um, but no, a really, really reliable workhorse, and it's testament to the rifle's design that it stayed in service for so long and still being uh, it's still being used by armies across the world in various forms. I mean. Uh, the Commonwealth, uh, Australia, New Zealand, or Canada, um, mm -hmm. all used versions of the L1A1. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, the Canadians uh, actually brought into service a, a sort of support weapon version of this. So it had a, a, a bipod here, a, lo a, a thicker, heavier barrel, um, and was used as a sporting rifle. So like a, a, it had an automatic function, and was used as a, like a, a light machine gun almost. Wow! 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 Well, there we are. Absolutely fascinating.